All right, you little butt panda. This is the type of video I like to play in the background while drawing or painting, and it's in a playlist of speed painting videos with idiot voiceovers like this. Uh, all right, so I fasted for 29 days during the Islamic holiday known as Ramadan. And if you're wondering what's up with that gross dude in the painting, I'll explain. Wait, 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 hold on. Does that mean that you were fasting while you were making those last few YouTube videos? Yes, I was fasting while I made some of those. Um, I was fasting for sure when I was making the face video because I think I said something in there about being hungry. My stomach is gargling, I'm hungry. I didn't mention fasting in my other videos or on social media because I originally wasn't going to even talk about it. Like, I wouldn't be able to sleep at night if I knew that I took advantage of a religion's uh, custom to get views. The reason why I decided to make this video about it is because I don't want the words Muslim and Islam to be taboo anymore. I want everyone to be able to talk about it as openly as we talk about, like, Christmas or Easter. Um, but... Like, if that's the change that I want, then I gotta do something about it, right? So, I'm gonna be completely honest with you about what I learned. What I learned in voting school is just- I already know that whatever I'm about to spew out of my mouth is not gonna be particularly intelligent or articulate because it's from the perspective of someone, me, uh, who is not a Muslim at all. And there is a lot more to it. Uh, this is just the initial impressions of Ramadan from an idiot. That's me. Ramadan is the ninth month of the Islamic calendar, which is based on the moon instead of the sun. So it shifts back 11 days each year. So this year, uh, it started on May 27th. And so next year, uh, let's see, I'm good at math. Next year, it'll be May 16th. Uh, so during Ramadan, you fast from sunrise to sunset. And the types of things that will negate or invalidate or destroy your fast include eating, drinking, uh, uh, smoking, sexual stuff, making yourself puke on purpose, and also being an asshole to other people. You're supposed to at least be cordial if you can't be nice. Uh, so you can't do that stuff when the sun is up. And I know that what it's, what, uh, like, what's considered sunrise and sunset is different depending on your time zone. I ran out of breath. Uh, but for me, it was basically around 3.30 a.m. to about 9 p.m. So there's, there's, like, no eating or drinking or stuff between those times. Basically all day. Oh, uh, you don't have to fast if you're on your period, though. Just make up the time later. That's what I did when my ovaries tried to kill me for a week. And, uh, oh, and you're not supposed to fast when you're sick. It, it seems like a strange thing to do, right? I, I thought it seemed a little intense. Like, how can anybody survive for an entire month doing that? Like, what if you have to go to work? Why, like, why would, why would anyone do that? Let's start with the why. Why the hell, I'm sorry, excuse me, God, uh, why the hecking heck would anyone want to do that? Here's why. My sister and her husband and kids are all Muslim, and uh, the way that they explained it is that it's basically just something that you do for God. Like, once a year, for a month, you sacrifice some of your comforts and stuff to put yourself in the frame of mind that being alive on this earth is a privilege. And... Um, like, you know what, you know that saying, you never know what you got till it's gone. That's not a song. Why did I sing it like a song? But yeah, you never know what you got till it's gone. Uh, I'll tell you what, you never know how nice it is to live in an environment that allows you to have food every single day until you choose not to partake. Oh, and that's the other reason. So that you can sympathize, I mean, empathize, whatever. What's the word I should use? Empathize. Yeah. So that you can empathize with the millions of people around the world uh, and even in your own city or town that don't have access to food every day. Like, I'm sure you've seen those YouTube videos uh, with the people, like, talking to the homeless dudes, and they ask, like, when's the last time you ate some food, man? And then they say, like, yesterday or two days ago. I live in a house with a refrigerator, for God's sake! I'm sorry, Lord, exfoliate me from my sins. I've been itching to say that. I didn't mean to use your name in vain. Let's try not to get so vascular with this video, shall we? Oh my god, that was the worst. Uh, anyway, when you see stuff on TV about people being hungry or whatever, it it doesn't seem 100% real, to me anyway, because uh, there, like there's a disconnect. It, like It's through a screen. It's not real life. During Ramadan, I felt the pain of hunger. I, like, I felt what it was like to not be 100% spoiled. Um... And that really let me start to see um, 
more what it's like for people that don't have their life handed to them on a silver platter. This is the intense part. Children, shield your eyes. Ow. Not, not to get too political, but um, there are countries where people, a lot of times because they're Muslim, are being hunted down. <laughs> are living in war zones, constantly on the run, hoping that they can just keep their kids alive for one more day. Like, a, like as I'm saying this, that's happening. So when I think about stupid stuff like that, not eating during daylight hours, it's like, pfft, bring it on. I can do anything because at least I'm not those guys. I'm not hearing bombs and gunfire outside every day. I, I, like, I know that when the sun goes down, I have food to eat. When I think of it like that, I can do anything. Fasting like a Muslim is the easiest thing in the world when you think about it like that. And just being hungry every day brought me into that frame of mind. Like while I was fasting, I was super thankful for the things and people in my life just because I was hungry for a month. It's a weird correlation, hunger and gratitude, but I guess it's true. At least it was for me. Um, it wasn't like I didn't eat though. I ate like the same amount of food as I normally eat in a day, but put into two meals instead of three. One meal at like 9 p.m. and the other at 3 a.m. And I was initially going to only fast for a couple of days uh, because I really like turning food into poop in my body, and I don't usually list being hungry and thirsty as one of my hobbies. Uh, but then I decided I would start what I had finished. Wait, no, that's not how it goes. Start what I had finished. No. I decided I would finish what started... I finished... I would finish what I you could do the, so you I, you do you could that you, I decided want, to finish I start him to do uh that? that I was going to finish yeah okay I decided not to quit and just do the whole thing Oh my god was that really so hard um by the way I'm not going to ask you to like the video but if you do uh can you just tell me at what time in the video you did like put the timestamp in the comment if you do only if you do um but I guess that goes for the dislike button as well. <laughs> also, give me a five-star review on Yelp. I want Guy Fieri to come visit my establishment and take me to Flavortown, Daddy! You got Fieri right. They, they do the they R get on, it on the time. They get, it, they get it wrong every time. You... You fry my gizzards, baby. You blonde sea urchin man. Oh, baby! Oh, baby! A triple! Oh, my God. Where was I going with this? Oh! Uh, there are some good things and bad things about my Ramadan Islamathon. <laughs> oh my God, look at that. I feel <laughs> Ramadan Islamathon. I feel like a. I feel like I feel like I'm in a Western. Like, all right, there's some good things and there's some bad things about my Ramadan Islamathon. Yeah, <laughs> 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 I prayed five times a day, um, and when you pray, you have to wash your hands, face, uh, arms, ears, hair, and feet with uh, water, and also rinse your mouth. I don't remember why. Oh, well, great video. You you came prepared. Uh, shut up, you overinflated ocarina with a mouth. Nobody wants to hear from you now. This is our time. Um, the hardest part was not accidentally eating. <laughs> Yeah, I know, right? Uh, what I mean by that is I, I had to get in the habit of not mindlessly reaching for a snack without realizing it. Oh, come on, can't I just have a little cracker? No! Uh, can I just have a little sip of water? I'm awful thirsty. No! Can I just... No, you may not eat the intestines of a little kitten and then drink its blood. What's wrong with you? How did you know? But the good thing is, uh, at the end... Like, when it's time to break the fast at the end of the day, you're supposed to eat. You're not supposed to fast for any longer than you need to. Actually, no, that other part was a lie, a total lie. Uh, actually, the actual hardest part was cooking food for my kid while I was hungry and not tasting it or eating with him. Nothing says jealousy like watching a two-year-old chow down on your delicious food as you drool all over yourself, making a bigger mess than he is, knowing full well it's gonna be another six hours before you eat. Oh, my stomach. Um, the other thing was, because I wasn't eating throughout the day, <coughs> God, uh, because I was, uh, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, low energy levels. So I had low energy levels because I was uh, uh, not 
eating throughout the day. So, like, it was hard to keep up with my son. He was going crazy, bouncing off the walls. Come play with me, Daddy. Come on, let's go jump off the roof and stick our fingers in the wall sockets. And I have to be like, I'm sorry, kiddo, not today. Daddy can't handle another electric shock. I'm too tired. You're going to have to play who's your daddy all by yourself. I'm not going to co-op with you right now. Should I? Okay. Should I really have to say that I don't actually do that with my kid? Well, here it is to be safe in, in case the NSA is listening. Oh, uh, where did I... Where did I put my tinfoil hat? <clears throat> the only games I play with my son are safe, age-appropriate activities suitable for Weenie Hut Juniors on Double Weenie Wednesday. Actually, they moved Double Weenie Wednesday to Friday. And besides, today's Monday. Therefore, that part about uh, jumping off the roof and touching wall sockets for fun was just a joke. Uh, if that were true, my son and I would have superpowers, which is also not true, Mr. NSA. We don't, we're not mutants with superhuman abilities who could pose a threat to national security. It's just a coincidence that my son's name is Xavier. Um, and the fact that we have a basement full of mutants in training. What? <coughs> I'm dying over here, man. You know what, though? I'm actually glad that I did it for a whole month, uh, for the whole month of Ramadan, because I, I don't know. It's hard to, just, to describe it, but... Remember when I said it's not going to be articulate? <laughs> um, there was, uh, anyway, uh, there's some sort of like spiritual thing that was going on in the background. Like, I, okay, so I'm not a religious guy, not exactly an atheist, but not religious for sure. So um, it was interesting to be a part of that. I like, I wonder what it would be like to do this with other religious customs to learn what uh, like to learn from the people that practice the different religions themselves like this <coughs> Save me save me from the nothing I've become uh, Yeah, so uh, the character I painted is called the ramen Don uh, My derpy brother gave me the idea and of course if you know me I took it to the next level he is like the anti ramadan ramen don because he is big he is mean and he gluttonizes his food gluttonizes is that even a word i i don't know uh do you even grammar um he kind of looks like a morph between ramen noodles the pillsbury doughboy and a dumpling head like if this were to be a comic or anime or something he would be like the main bad guy like a kingpin type of character like he's the godfather of the ramen noodle gang known as uh, the broth, or no, maybe, maybe the brotherhood, maybe brotherhood is the official name, and they just go by the broth, because they're cool like that, um, the ramen don is a, a semi-celestial being, in that he has some sort of magic, or like supernatural powers, or whatever you want to call it, so his office is up in space, uh, but in reality, he's not all that powerful, it's really his reputation and street cred that give him his power, like Jabba the Trump. I mean, uh, Hut. I, I said Jabba the Hut. I said Jabba the Hut. <clears throat> okay, let's see if we can do something with this. <sighs> Nobody in the galaxy is safe from his manipulation because you never know who's secretly working for him. It could even be your best friend. Uh, like, okay, you could be taking a stroll down to planet Zylok in the subsystem of... Protar B, and then BAM! Your best friend and sidekick, uh, Lady Crisana. But you just call her Chris because she's a rebel like you now. Uh, throw the name Lady Crisana out there and you got a whole fleet of Imperial peacemakers on your tail. Anyway, she betrays you to the space pirates you've been running from since episode one and season two. And now it seems like it's game over for you and all the other protagonists. And you hope that the writers will somehow work their magic with the plot and reveal that just before the season finale, Lady Crisana was actually just tricking everyone in order to get closer to the Ramadan to take him down. But the situation is so, like, like this is the end. Like, it's game over, man. Like, they're gonna die, and if that, like, that's gonna be the end, and there's no way that they can get out of it. But, but there's seven episodes still left in the season. What are they gonna do? Just make us watch all the bad guys celebrate the death of our, our favorite characters for seven whole episodes? While we cling to the last little dingleberry of hope that our hero didn't actually die? Come on, Netflix! Quit playing with my emotions like this! Um, where was I going with this? Uh, oh yeah, Art Block. I struggled so hard with this, and I got really upset with myself that I couldn't make this into anything other than 100% genuine certified garbage. 
Like, I worked on this so much throughout the last few weeks. I was falling asleep on my drawing tablet. I spent so many hours trying to make it work before it actually started to take shape at all. So, I was saying it, like, in my last drawing tutorial, that no one cares about your art, right? Like, you are the only person in the world that you need approval from. Well, you and Markiplier. You need approval from Markiplier. Not Jackie, though. He's happy enough for all of us down here in the comments. He sucks all the hype out of me like that like that yellow can thing from Monsters, Inc. I think it's a conspiracy. He gets his energy from his viewers through their screams. And in turn, he, sc he screams. Uh, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call his studio thing the scream floor. <clears throat> I bet that's how it works. Like, he takes the screams of little girls and uses it as energy. And it's overflowing inside him. And he lets it out with a freaking pterodactyl screech anytime anything even moderately average happens in the game. Oh my god! This guy has blue pants! Ah! <laughs> Friggin' Markiplier. Oh, oops. I said God again. Come on, man. You're supposed to be respectful. This is a video talking about religion, and you're just over here going off about Jack Stankify. If you liked it, punch that like button in the face like a boss! And I completely forgot what I was saying. <clears throat> um, anyway. In the last tutorial, I was saying that as artists, we often psych ourselves out of good art and make we make crap because we try too hard. I know there must be at least one other person besides me that gets afraid to draw, but we do it anyway. Why? I don't know. Probably because of some biomechanical interlocking system inside us that compels us to create or something. I don't know. Anyway, when we work on a drawing or painting and when it's not aesthetic as crap, we lose it. And I think the number one thing that ruins my drawings is my high expectations and huge, rotting piles of fear. That's what happened with this painting. I had a major art block for like a week or two. Um, it was really starting to get to me. And I finally listened to my own advice from my female shirt video, and I just started painting no. for myself instead of trying to make it good to show you. No offense. As soon as I stopped trying with this, the painting came to life. Like, I didn't realize but I think I was just kind of forcing it. The harder you try to make something you think you should make or make it look the way you think it should look, the worse it'll be. So don't try, just let it happen. That's what I did with this. Look at this. When you zoom in, it's terrible. And you can tell I didn't care. Those noodles are just too flat paint strokes each. What's up with that orange spot by the guy's neck? You didn't even try to blend those highlights. Boy, those chopsticks aren't even inside the bowl. Let yourself be you on paper. Free your mind to wander around about stupid stuff like, I wonder how many times my crush has looked at me and said to themselves, wow, that person would be so cute if they didn't have a booger hanging off their nose. Learn your lessons, kids. Clean your sniff holes. Um, it really does help to let thoughts come and go without trying to think about anything. Some of your subconscious will actually take on some of the work for you. That's why, um, like, doodles in class seem easy, and sometimes they turn out better than your actual drawings that you try on. It's because you're half paying attention to the teacher blabbering about how it's important to write your name and date on paper properly because next year they won't be so forgiving and uh, the other half of your brain is focused on all the weird stuff that goes on inside your head and now that's already like 90% of your attention. I don't know if that's right or not. I doodled during math class, but still, that means that there's not much left to think about um, like with the actual drawing part because your mind is already busy being preoccupied with other useless crap that distracts you from the drawing. And that's why I listen to audio uh, and videos like this while I draw so that I get that doodle distraction but not from a boring teacher. Or maybe that's exactly what this is. <laughs> I'm a boring teacher here to distract you. Don't be fooled. I'm a lizard man. Illuminati confirmed. <laughs> yeah! Anyway, stop trying to think your drawing onto the paper. You will never stop hating your art, no matter what. So there's nothing to lose. The hate never goes away, so don't even try. I wouldn't call myself an artist, okay? I don't feel like an artist. I feel like somebody who constantly and consistently, accidentally makes drawings and paintings that others enjoy. Maybe that's what being an artist is all about, though. Feeling like an idiot and hating your own reflection. Um, but one day I want to be a prof one day I am going to be a professional artist. I initially wanted to be a concept artist for video games. Um, that's why I quit 
school at age 16 and uh, started college so that I could become a professional faster. But things happened a lot differently than I expected. That's a story for another video, though. I won't get into that now. But um, when I was 16, I decided I was going to be a concept artist and work in like a AAA studio, namely Blizzard. I would have helped design some of the Overwatch characters as an intern or something if I had stuck to that plan, but I didn't. Um, what remained constant, though, throughout all the plan changes and stuff is um, is that I love creating stories that could be books or TV shows or anime. And I think that's why this guy, that's why I, th I like him so much. I could do a whole video on the lore of Ramen Don um, and the universe that he's in. I just love designing characters and things. Uh, I wonder what I'll be doing in five years. I don't know, but... All I know is that the same thing that drives me to create weird stuff like this on YouTube will drive what I'm doing for my career, a career five years from now. I can already see a shift within myself happening right now. Kind of like when Goku learned that there was a form beyond his normal self. Even further beyond! Ah! Until then, though, I'll let the uh, I'll let the depression and self-loathing be my food and water. Oh, by the way, should I do live streams? Is that something you'd be interested in? Does Does anyone have the notifications on to know when I would be live? I'm thinking about streaming every once in a while and taking requests and doing live tutorials and stuff. Um, but be honest, though, if you don't have notifications on, I'm not going to ask you to turn them on. I'm just wondering how many of you click the bell, that's all. But back to the Ramadan thing, it actually was a positive experience. The only bad thing was hunger, which is something you can totally live with for a few hours each day. I've definitely started to appreciate things in my life more, which is something that I believe makes you happier because in a way, being grateful for things means that you're happy to have that thing, right? So being thankful for stuff is being happy for the things in your life. And I think... I think that's why a lot of Americans seem so unhappy despite the fact that they seem to have so much. They rush around and never stop to understand what they have or who they have in their life. They just go and go and go. So thank you uh, for those of you watching, especially those of you who are crazy and watch this until the end. Are you okay? Do you need a doctor? Uh, I think I see some of your brain spilling out of your ear. I think I damaged you. Um, Oh, and also, thank you for clicking on the ads to give me money. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, but uh, if I had something to sell to you, I would. But uh, I don't. So just doodle something stupid, and uh, that'll be your payment to me. Yep. I'll be including your fan art in the next one. I used exactly 80 pieces of fan art in my last tutorial. So tag both at Zabio Arts and hashtag Zabio Fan Art if you want your art here. And you can also email me your fan art, but you have to say that I'm allowed to use it for a video. It's fanart at zabioarts.com. And if you're going to send me fan art to use, though, include your username in the drawing so that people can see who it's from. Or be mysterious, either way. Um, oh, wow. I was not planning on making a video about this. I cannot believe I did an episode on religion. That's because Jesus Christ is my No, God!